Hello guys, uh, we wanted to give you a little update on the HGC restoration while I was having fun with my new uh, gyroscope acquisitions. Uh, Mike was doing some more work uh, to prepare us for the next step in the AGC restoration. So can you explain what is it you did, Mike? Sure. Uh, so I put together a circuit board that plugs into the test connector of the AGC. So this board was made for us by our sponsor PCBWay, uh, who's been helping us out with the restoration project. Uh, we're really thankful for that. Um, this one in particular has uh, four mil traces, uh, which were, was needed to get all of these signals from this side to this side. This will plug in the AGC test port at the right of this picture. During flight, the connector is covered with this grounding plug, but we are going to replace it by this, which will contain Mike's modern re-implementation of the AGC monitor, a key piece of ground test equipment used during the AGC hardware and software development. This side of the board uh, is a 144 pin test connector for the AGC. Uh, the Samtech pins are going to plug in uh, here to go straight into the AGC. Uh, and then this side does all of the logic level conversion for the FPGA, uh, which implements all of the logic for MIT's ground support equipment for the AGC, which will let us you know, do all of the debugging capabilities, single stepping, memory inspection, all of that. Yeah, so, so basically with the help of this interface board, we can connect our replica of the ground test equipment mm -hmm. to a real AGC and we'll gain insight to everything the AGC does. Right. So the blackboard on this side is the same one that I uh, just showed you with the FPGA board attached. And then the blue board simulates the electrical interfaces of all of the pins on the test connector. So to the blackboard, the blue board looks like a real AGC. So when we get the AGC, basically this whole little thing will be replaced by the big monster, right? You right. just shrunk the AGC to a gate exact FPGA. Exactly. You what happened. So at this point you have a simulated AGC running. Yes. and being monitored by your ground equipment and mm -hmm. having a real disk key. So you, you are running, uh, I understood, Apollo 11 original code on it right now? Yes, this is running Luminary 99 Revision 1, which was the Apollo 11 Lunar Module program. Could you, with the help of your monitor, mm -hmm. fly part of the mission? I can. Ha uh ha. -huh. Can you please fly part of P63? Yes. So for you guys that don't know, P63 is a critical moment. Uh, it begins the landing uh, phase on the moon. They are in the LEM and they are going to do the burn to do the descent. So something that they hadn't done ever before Apollo 11. And Mike can do it again. All right. So you just loaded the, uh, the state of the memory uh, that it would have been when they started the P63? Yes, uh, so all of memory is set. So now if I do a verb 16, noun 65, enter, we're at launch plus 102 hours, 23 minutes and 20 seconds. Cool, so we're flying. Mm -hmm. We have undocked from the uh, command module. Yes, about 45 minutes ago. Yeah, we are flying on our backs. Yes, or, right? we are, actually we're heads down on the follow <coughs> So, so far we are where Apollo 10 was, yeah. right? And then we're going to do the last step. Yep. Okay, do the last step, Mike. All right. Get us on the moon. So let me stop the clock display. Eagle Houston, did you call? AOS land. Roger, AOS land. Looks good, fly. Roger. And then we can go into program 63. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. so that's the one. We're, we're following the, the <laughs> list here. I wrote it down. We are at this step right here in the checklist. P63. Yeah, so... Okay, check. Look real good. P63 when we're at it, Roger. P63 is looking at our current position and velocity and the location of the landing site and it's calculating what our braking burn needs to look like to get us there. Uh, so we found a solution. Uh, this is telling us that the braking burn is going to be 9 minutes and 50 seconds long uh, and it's going to start in 12 minutes 40 seconds. 
And then the last line is saying that our landing site is uh, 0.7 miles off to the side if we were to follow our trajectory in a straight line. Um, so from here, uh, we can also do a noun 33 enter to display the exact time of ignition. TIG. Yeah. Yes, sorry. All right. TIG, uh, uh -huh. which is at launch plus 102 hours, 36 minutes, and 40 seconds. Uh, this should be really close to what Apollo 11 actually got for their TIG. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Did you get uh, his TIG is real good in P-63? Seven hundred to the second of our Roger. There are some expected values in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can key release to go uh, get out of that, and then we'll proceed to accept that burn. Mm -hmm. And so the next thing that we get is a flashing verb 50 noun 25 display. And so this means uh, verb 50 is please perform, noun 25 is checklist code, and uh, checklist code 14 is fine alignment of the IMU. Uh, we already did that. Wait, because I have it right here. Yes. <laughs> so you're fine aligning this, right? Yep. This cool thing, right? But it's already aligned, right? Because yes. we did it in the previous video. So we know exactly where we're pointing. <laughs> Uh, so I don't need to do it again. So instead mm -hmm. of pressing proceed, I'm going to mm -hmm. hit enter to skip it. Mm -hmm. And now I'm getting a flashing verb 50, noun 18, uh, which is please perform auto maneuver. Okay. Uh, so this is essentially getting us to the attitude that we need to be in to start the burn. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to be uh, plus 180.53 degrees, plus 284.5 degrees, plus 359.9 degrees. Mm -hmm. um, That's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we should be pretty close to the numbers that they say in the checklist. Yeah, 180, 27, 2, 0. So I'm, yeah, I, I'm chatting, I'm chatting, <laughs> I'm, I'm Houston. <laughs> My control, we're at the burn attitude. Roger. Um, so we're already in this attitude, so okay. I can't proceed to do the maneuver, um, mm -hmm. but it's going to come right back. Right. And it's 180.5, so you really had to know where the point decimal was in yes. your head. Yeah, the astronauts had to memorize the decimal locations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, okay, so the next thing that we have to do is initialize the abort guidance system. Uh, so we're going to do that with verb 47. Pardon, clear. Okay, let's Roger, stand by your, for our uh, verb 47. Tags, initialization and alignment. Standing by flight. Okay. So that's the that's the other computer, the the, the rescue computer. Yes. If everything else fails. You have a computer right. that's just good enough to exactly pop them back up into yeah. orbit. Yeah. So the abort guidance computer. That's its only job is to mm -hmm. get it get us back to the command module if something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, but in order to do that, it needs to know where we are and where the command module is. And I've gotten a flashing verb six down sixteen display. This is asking me to confirm when the last time the AGS clock was zeroed. Mm -hmm. uh, so that we agree on what time it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is saying we last zeroed the ice clock at launch plus 90 hours, which is correct. Uh, so I'm going to hit proceed. Uh, and what the AGC is doing now is it's taking all of the state vector information, position and velocity for both vehicles. Um, it's calculating those into AGS coordinates, and then it's sending that information across to the AGS over a dedicated serial link. Because the, the AGS didn't have one of these good things, right? right. So we had just the BMAX, yes. which were more like these crappy things. So it's reset mm -hmm. by the, by the, actually the, the bigger computer while it works. Right. Okay, uh, so I've gotten a flashing verb 50 down 16, which means that it's done doing that. Flight guidance, we're going initialize. Roger, you're going the initialization. Eagle Houston, the oh. ag initialization look good to us, over. Uh, and uh, now the next thing that we need to do, we need to proceed to finish that. Uh, the next thing we need to do is make sure that the information actually made it to the AGS correctly. Uh, so on the AGS, we would pull up uh, our rendezvous parameters, and I'll do the same thing on the AGC with uh, verb 83, enter. Uh, so this is starting a routine that uh, propagates our position and velocity state vector to the current time. Uh, and displays where we are relative to the command module. Okay. Uh, and the AGS would be showing us the same information. So we would compare this information to what the AGS is saying. Uh, so we check the, the two computers uh, do the same, get the same result from trying the same calculation. Right. Uh, so the first line here is telling us what the distance to the command module is, mm -hmm. uh, which is 
71.53 miles and mm -hmm. how far, how quickly we're moving away from it, mm -hmm. uh, which is 392.2 feet per second. And then the last line here is what our angle is relative to the horizon. Okay. Uh, so this all looks good. Um, and now we need to do a, a sort of hack uh, to fix a problem with the CDU, not the famous problem with the CDU that caused the 1202s, but another one that could cause the AGS attitude to be completely wrong. Okay. Uh, so to do that, we're first going to display what our uh, IMU angles are with a noun 20 enter. Yeah. Oh, I see the hack <clears throat> right here. Yep. Non 20, verb 40, enter 400 plus. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now, so I, now that I have recorded or memorized what my uh, right angles are, here, okay. I do the verb 40, which mm -hmm. zeroes the counters in the CDU. Okay, 40, enter. And now I'm getting all zero here, but uh -huh. the real CDU would start counting back to those correct values. So, anyways, uh, that screen went away. Um, we were supposed to be monitoring for CDU transients in there. We didn't right. see any. Confirm um, no CDU transients. Yep. No transients. Roger. Uh, Houston, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to hit proceed to go back to the auto maneuver screen. Mm -hmm. And I can do one final trim on the attitude by hitting proceed again. Mm -hmm. We're oh, still pointing Final that trim. Way. Yep. I have it right there. Okay. And you're trimmed. Mm -hmm. So you're right here. So now that we're pointing the right way, we have our ads set up and everything, I can hit enter to go past the auto maneuver screen. And I've gotten a checklist code. This is not in the checklist. Uh, this is because I didn't follow the checklist earlier. Okay. <laughs> um, checklist code 500 is telling me to set my landing radar to the right position. So there's- You haven't on that? <laughs> right. And uh, Houston, we got a 500 alarm. Uh, early in the program, went to uh, descent one, proceeded on it, and we're back at uh, auto again. Over. Roger, we saw that buzz. Thank you much, Al. 10 degrees right, flight. Uh, I think, and I'll... Roger. Okay, that wasn't an alarm. That was a code. Okay. Roger, we saw that. Uh, there's two positions the landing radar can be in, uh, because the LEM can either be flying this way or mm -hmm. this way. Mm -hmm. uh, and to see the surface at, at our current attitude for this stage of the burn, uh, it needs to be in position one, but I have it set to position two. But fortunately, <laughs> you, you have. Right, fortunately, I have a. Here. You, you have a complete command <laughs> panel. Yep. So this is, is equivalent of the LEM control panel with all the switches, <laughs> <laughs> of oh. which, well, you have the important one for landing. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is our own Redux version of this awesome command panel, a bit simplified maybe. Switch your radar to the correct position. All right, that should do it. And this switch over here. All right. I'll and see. now if I hit proceed, yes, it let me pass that screen. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, great. Uh, so now I've gotten another problem because <laughs> I was really bad at following the checklist. Right. Uh, 203 is set all of your switches to the right position. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's three switches that it wants uh, in particular on this step. Uh, it wants guidance control to be set to pings for the AGC. Uh, it wants uh, mode control to be set to auto and it wants throttle, throttle control to be set to So auto. it checks your back yes. that you have set. And, yeah. and of course you're a bad astronaut, but <laughs> well, exactly that we didn't have those switches when we started and then we figured yep. out we had to add them. So. Right. Okay. So let me set those three switches. So this will give the AGC complete control over the lunar module. Uh -huh. And now I can hit proceed. And we're past that. Oh, you want to? You <clears throat> wanted to be sure it was actually <laughs> it was actually in control. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so uh, what is happening right now is P sixty three is propagating the state factor to uh, ignition minus thirty seconds, which is when average G starts. Mm -hmm. uh, average G is the routine that uh, continuously updates the state factor with our, our changing position and velocity, mm -hmm. and takes into account the. Um, the accelerations from the mm -hmm. descent engine. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are at the famous go no go at this point, right? You we see? are. Yep. 
Okay, all flight controllers, go, no, go for power descent. Retro? Go. Fido? Go. Guidance? Go. Control? Go. Telcom? Go. GNC? Go. Ecom? Go. Surgeon? Go. Capcom, we're go for power descent. You're go. <laughs> I decided so. All right. So, um, what this screen is telling us is that our, um, our velocity at, our inertial velocity at ignition minus 30 seconds is going to be 5,556.7 feet per second. Uh, our burn is going to start in 2 minutes and uh, 47 seconds. Okay. And then the last, uh, the last row, which is all zeros right now, is our accumulated velocity change. So that'll start counting up as soon as we start doing our haulage burn, and then it'll go up really fast when we turn on the descent engine. Assuming you actually had an engine. If I had an engine, yeah. We'll, we'll oh, have right. it all zeros, unfortunately. <laughs> right. And, yeah, so now I'm going to go around the horn. <laughs> Fido, go! <laughs> Etc. Then you have a... So, sit altitude... Attitude check. Right, pitch 212, y'all plus 37. Sequence camera on with the turn of the camera. Mm -hmm. Verb 77E, enter. You need to do that? Ah, I do need to do that, yes. Verb 77, enter. Okay. Uh, this isn't strictly necessary. Mm -hmm. um, this puts. This takes the, the LEM out of minimum impulse mode, uh, which is the mode we've been in right now to, to oh, okay. minimize the amount of RCS we've right. been expecting. Okay. So it gives um, us more, more yeah. authority. Our understanding is that P63 would not necessarily care if I mm. forgot that step. This is more for contingencies if something went wrong. Right. Uh, we uh, want to be in the right mode. Uh, I'm reading my, my, uh, <laughs> my sheet here. <laughs> okay, and then... Then it's supposed to be serious. Yes. Engine arm descent minus 7.5 second ullage. Python, dips arm. Raj, dips arm. So before we get to those steps, mm -hmm. uh, at ignition minus 30 seconds, uh, my screen here is going to blank. And then uh, five seconds later, the screen will come back and we'll start getting updated numbers here. So the first, the first line, our initial, inertial velocity is going to start increasing. Um, because uh, we'll be getting lower in our orbit. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll start speeding up. Okay, so our display has blanked. Let's see if I can splice in the real <laughs> thing, because they, they actually yes. tell Houston when that happens. So average G is going. Uh, you can see our inertial velocity counting up. Uh -huh. And then the next thing that will happen is at uh, ignition minus five seconds, I'll get a flashing verb 99, which is a final confirmation that I wanted to start. You really engine. want to land. So I need to press proceed in those five seconds oh, so the engine will oh, you're start. Oh, you already out. Ullage, right? Yep. No, Ullage right now. All right, uh, so proceed. Ullage, one, zero, ten percent. Ten percent TCP. Raj, ten percent. Okay, and oh, so our burning? descent burn has started. Okay. So the uh, first, the first line is still our um, inertial velocity. The mm -hmm. second line is our uh, altitude rate, mm -hmm. which is decreasing, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's not happy. Yeah. So the flashing verb ninety-seven here is a thrust monitor failure. So, so it's detected that our engine isn't thrusting. Yes, so we, we are going to deviate slightly from the plan. <laughs> uh, Houston, it did not well, turn on. There's, there's one more thing that happened on Apollo 11. Right. One more thing that went wrong that we can show here. Right. Um, if I inhibit alarms with the monitor and mm -hmm. then cause a hardware alarm, mm -hmm. you can see it get locked up here. Um, so it's trying to start new jobs and failing to do so. And now uh, it came back, I got a program alarm. I can do a verb 05 down 09, enter. <gasps> I got a 1202. That's good. Is it accepting its guidance? 
1202. Looks like it's converging. 1202 alarm. Flight retro. Go retro. Throttle down. Six plus two five. Give us a reading on the 1202 program alarm. We're going that flight. Yeah, we're 1202. So <laughs> 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 this landing is not really going good. Where well, we have a, we have a, a, an engine that doesn't work, and we got which fortunately <laughs> the engine did work, but they really did get the 1202. So how did you get the 1202 here? How do you simulate that again? Uh, so the way I did it is uh, the AGC has a bunch of what are called hardware alarms in it, mm -hmm. uh, which are sort of like watchdog circuits. Mm -hmm. They make sure that the program is doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a final check. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of those is called TC Trap, which is uh, a circuit that checks to see if uh, the software is executing only the transfer control instruction. So yeah, so if, if, it's, if it's in an endless loop to, it, to, to itself. Right, right, if you have a branch to self-instruction. Right. Uh, so... Verb 69 was put in for debugging purposes and mm -hmm. that it, it starts a job that just has a jump to self instruction. Uh -huh. um, and normally the hardware would save us from that, right. but using the monitor, uh, there's a, a debugging pin that I can assert to disable all hardware alarms to make sure they can't do their thing. Uh, so Verb 69 starts a job that jumps to itself uh, and none of the other jobs can start or it can run, uh -huh. uh, but every two seconds, a job called the, uh, the servicer starts, and the servicer is the job that uh, calculates new engine commands, updates the display, uh, you know, does all the P63 things. So we have a new servicer starting once every two seconds, but the old servicers aren't starting, so they just stack up until we run out of slots for jobs, uh, and then you get a we take a 1202. But so that's exactly the effect is the same as what they had on the um, on the Apollo Eleven. Exactly. Is that, but the cause are the same. The, the cause on the Apollo Eleven will will get there one right. one day we'll, to explain we'll it. It's, it's on the ECDU and it's an ECDU problem right. that was sending wrong information. Here we created another error that uh, caused the twelve o two. But can you do it again? And because yes. it, it causes the computer to restart, right? It does. And, and it's completely instant. Well, yeah. So th this is a software restart that right. happens. So uh, the software just decides to flush out all the tasks and jobs it has uh, and then restart itself. I didn't see the restart light go. So it's just the progr program alarm is, is all that came, up, that came on. The Correct. The yellow program alarm. The restart alarm. light is controlled entirely by hardware. Okay. So if the hardware restarts, then the restart light comes on. If the software does it, it's just a program alarm thing. But we just went through a computer restart, and it's still flying it. Yes. Right. So yeah. So, so I can I can disable this and do another verb sixty nine. And this time I got a restart light. This was a hardware restart. So this was the circuits taking control and restarting the program back from the beginning. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's still going through all of this. All right. I wish my Windows machine would <laughs> restart like this and not lose a beat if it had a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah, but that's what basically saved the mission. <laughs> right. Right. So the next step, obviously, well, that's for the future, but that we feed it with the accelerometer data right. that it expects. And then we could probably continue the, uh, the landing. But mm -hmm. at, at this point, all uh, we have, which is already not bad, is a uh, you know, working simulated hardware. A uh, working monitor and a wonderful control panel with millions of switches. <laughs> well, we have the ones that matter. Yep. Uh, and we were able to redo a little part of the P63. Picking up some dust. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. APA at a deep end. Mode control both auto, decent engine command override off, engine arm off, 413 is in. We've had shut down. We copy you down, Eagle. Tranquility base here, the Eagle has landed. 